Number two, we're going to prompt the user to enter a series of numbers, up to 100 numbers, and then to determine whether the sequence they have entered is actually a Fibonacci sequence. As soon as the user enters any negative number, that means they want to stop entering the number. That's sort of the, uh, the rule. Okay, let's create a new class here. Let's call that, let's say, determine fib seek. Okay, and then with a the main method there, and say finish. Okay, so now, first of all, because we're going to need to read integer and string from the user, so we're going to need a scanner, as usual, scanner input assigned to new scanner uh, system.in. Okay, so now, let's not worry about the outer loop first. The outer loop is going to ask the user yes or no. We can do that as a, uh, as a last step, as I showed you in the previous exercise. So now, let's say we're going to <coughs> keep prompting the user to actually enter a number. So the way to do that would be, uh, let's declare a Boolean variable here. So user wants to uh, enter more numbers. It's very long, but that actually tells you what it is supposed to mean. And then we'll say while the user wants to enter more numbers, we're going to keep prompting them for numbers. So it's different from asking yes or no, it's different, okay? So don't get confused. We'll do the yes and no on Wednesday. So now, while the user wants to enter more numbers, we're going to prompt them for the numbers, of course. So let me just see what the uh, message is. You're going to say enter a positive integer or minus one to stop. So you're going to say, because it's system the outer print, so we can separate that into two statements here. You can say enter a positive integer value and then system the out dot print line to complete the line. <coughs> or minus one to stop. Okay. So we're gonna read the integer from the user. What about integer here? Let's say just i is assigned to input dot next int. But since later on we're gonna use the yes and no question, so we're gonna have a mix of next int and next line. So we better say input dot next line over here, just to avoid the issue. Okay. Okay, so far not too bad. So now we have to say under what circumstances does it really mean that the user do not want to enter any more numbers, right? So now, so user, uh, so let's do the following. Let's just, the system, uh, user wants to enter more numbers. <coughs> it's assigned to uh, i greater than zero. Actually, I should say greater than or equal to zero. Okay, what does that mean? So let's say the user enters zero, that could that could be just one of the elements in the Fibonacci sequence, right? If they enter two or three, they will all consider all be considered. They simply want to enter more. But as soon as they enter, for example, minus one or minus two, then minus one larger than equal to zero will be false, which means they do not want to continue to enter more numbers. So that's uh, how the relation works. Okay, let me put on comment for you. User, if the user enters uh, a number i that is strictly less than zero, <coughs> then that means they want to stop entering numbers. Something like that. Okay. So now, that's actually how we actually interact with the user. So now, why don't we give it a try, okay? After that, we can just say system line. So we can really try how the skeleton of our root loop works. Okay, so let's say user quit, something like that, to actually tell us what this means. Let's give it a try. Enter a positive integer value, or minus one to stop. If I enter one, that's good. Two, good. Three, good. If I say minus one, then use a quit. 
Okay, that's how it works. So I'm trying to gradually build up the program. Of course, now the next step would be if the user enters positive number, we have to store that into the uh, uh, some array, right? That's what we're going to do. So we better initialize the array outside the loop. Okay. If you actually initialize the array inside the while loop, for example, if I do this, if I say integer array, let's say sequence, because we are not short yet, if that's a Fibonacci sequence, just say a sequence, is equal to new <coughs> uh, integer array, let's say up to 100. But 100 is kind of like a magic number, so what if you want, you can also try the following. You can simply declare final integer, like a constant, Let's say maximum size of the array is equal to 100. Okay? And then you can simply refer to here as maximum size. You can change that later if you like. So if you actually try to use this variable, this constant in multiple places, so whenever you change the value, all the places will be changed accordingly. So that's sort of the idea. So now, if I do this, it's wrong. Because that simply means every time when the user enters a new number, which should be stored in the same uh, should be stored in the same sequence. I'm actually initializing a new sequence here, right? So that's not the right place to put. You should really try to initialize this sequence once, uh, only once, outside the while. Okay, that's something you should really uh, try to convince yourself. <coughs> like look here. Okay, other than that, I think the final thing we need is a counter to see how many numbers that has been read so far. That's what the, the trick we learned on the case study on Wednesday. <coughs> and then we're going to have things like this. Uh, integer, how many numbers read? Initially just zero. Okay, so now remember we're going to use this variable here also as the index for us to store values into the array, right? Initially at a zero, so now we have to, after we read i from the user, we have to do some case distinction. Because if i is negative, then we don't store the numbers into the uh, sequence, yeah? So if i is larger than or equal to zero, that means we want to store the numbers. In this case, uh, store i into the sequence. Otherwise, uh, otherwise we simply just this means the user wants to quit. Okay, we just do uh, don't do anything. <coughs> okay, so now how do we store that? So we have to say sequence as some index here is assigned to i, right? And we're going to use the uh, counter here, like how many numbers has been read, right? That's something we're going to use. After that, we're going to increment this counter by 1. So that's exactly how we did it in a previous case study. So please review this point. It's very important, actually. OK, so now that should do it. And we are making the assumption that the user is not going to enter more than 100 values. So this, uh, you don't have to worry about that. That's the assumption. So now, finally, we'd like to just double check with one thing. Okay. So now the user quits, and now we want to print out the sequence that we have read so far. When the, uh, so you will simply do for integer i equals 0, i less than length i plus plus okay and now if i do uh, system dot out dot print line i'll just say print line you can actually put an angle brackets uh thing from the previous exercise if you like that's something you should do i'll leave that to you so you can fix that on wednesday by wednesday so we simply do sequence at i okay why don't we give it a try uh, i'll give you time to talk Let's give it a try and then see how that works. Okay, let's try the following. Why don't we try this? Let's say 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 5. That's it. Let's say minus 1. 
However, see what happens here. We actually got 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. That's correct. But we still got 0, 0, 0 here. Why? What's wrong with the for loop here? Something wrong with there? Those blanks slot exactly because we only ended five numbers. Exactly. But how would you suggest that we fix this? But somehow we should only go up to the last place we store the number, right? Any suggestion here? Besides the very first one, the first one would be output it to the zero so we exclude all those blanks. Not quite, actually. Remember, we actually maintain a counter over there. The, uh, <coughs> how many numbers are red? So that's actually why the counter is so useful. So actually, that's uh, that what we did from the case study. So now the upper bound for <coughs> printing out the uh, the sequence should not be the length anymore. It should be uh, the how many numbers red, right? Okay. So that's something again you should really watch for. Okay. Very important. Where well, you haven't used up all the 100 slots in the array. So in this case. Let's say if we have entered five numbers so far, so that means you only print up to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 indices, right? So that's something I should really try to review, maybe by Wednesday, to make sure you understand why it works. Okay, so that's why it should be how many numbers read rather than sequence.length. Okay, let's try again. And then we'd say 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. And let's say we don't want to uh, enter any more number. In this case, yep, you can see we only go up to, so here we have entered uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have entered 6 numbers. So we will only go up to, but not including index 6, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes. OK, any questions about this? OK, so what you need to do by Wednesday try <coughs> to continue from here because up to, uh, from line number 32 we already uh, store the sequence properly so now how do you determine if that particular sequence is actually a Fibonacci sequence you should be able to just use a simple loop like a check to see the, uh, the array is sorted use something similar and given that you have done the exercise about how to generate a Fibonacci sequence so this one should be rather easy Okay, try that before Wednesday, and the first thing we'll do on Wednesday would be to go over the solution of this, and then we'll do some exercises on two-dimensional arrays. That's the plan. Okay, if you have no questions, I will see you on Wednesday.